morning welcome i know we missed last class um so we um we've been looking at chapter 7 right chapter 7 how jesus ministered the word for us to learn from uh, how he ministered uh, some lessons that we can put to practice in our own lives okay let's okay we'll pray and then we'll get started today <clears throat> Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us, Lord, to be your spokespeople, O God. Master, we thank you. What an awesome privilege that the infinite God, with this eternal Word, would call us as finite beings. And uh, Lord, I thank you that you put your Word in our hearts, Lord. You put your words in our mouths, in our minds, Father God, so that we might communicate that, Father God. We thank you for this awesome privilege that you've given us to be co-workers. Lord, with um, with you, Father God, in what you're doing, Lord, all around our nation, Lord, uh, the nations of the world, Father God, we thank you that you called us to be proclaimers of the truth. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you would make us, Lord, we, even as we come before you, God, the things that needs to be strengthened in us, Lord, uh, the things that. The, that need to be removed out of our lives father god and uh, lord whatever you want to establish lord i pray that you will do it o master do it o god for your name's sake do it for your glory o god yes lord let there be a changing let there be a making o father god lord in our own lives even today even right now lord spirit of god we ask you lord that you would come and move and lord shift things lord in us lord prioritize things in us o god that we might truly reflect who you are father god and that we might truly be instruments of righteousness in your hands as willing vessels of honor in your hands father god yes master we thank you we give you all the praise at this time and we give you all the glory in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay okay so why are we um, you know studying this whole thing of how jesus ministered the word because we know that he is the eternal word or that's his title right he's the living word the eternal word and so um in how he ministered uh we see that he that where there was fruit and different things different ways in which he ministered different uh, characteristics that we see uh, is something for us to put into practice in our own lives right so we saw that there was a timely word or a word in season and right? a word that was required for that season for that time uh, that is what he spoke in fact isaiah 50 is actually a a, a a a prophetic word about him right about the lord then we looked at um, uh, how he heard uh, the lord himself testifying and saying he spoke what he heard the father spoke in fact he did what he saw the father do right so um so since his ministry of the word and and his ministry um in what he did was so closely patterned what the father did right so also our lives so that uh, it's not our human ingenuity or you know wisdom or anything but we closely walk with god and everything is based on our intimacy with god okay so that's that's always of a high value there's no compromise on that right so we make every attempt to to observe to make time to receive because he's willing to speak right to make time to receive to to be dependent on him in order to you know be spokesperson uh, in order to be ambassadors in order to be um, people who would represent christ you know, wherever he places us right thirdly we saw that he spoke with wisdom right there was so much wisdom and they were astonished right matthew 13 54 and in fact it was in his own own town own country where um where the lord jesus said you know the prophet is not without honor except in his own own home own house um when they when he taught in the synagogue they were astonished and they said where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works the secret was of course he heard the father speak and that is what he spoke he saw the father do and that is what he did right and he spoke with authority right uh, luke chapter 4 he spoke with authority his word was with authority okay 
so authority is knowing and receiving and doing what you've called to do right when there's authority uh, the authority comes from knowing uh, when we when we talk about you know this particular thing you know just not talking about general authority but spiritual authority authority comes from us being subject to god and his word right so there's so, so much of boldness that comes and there's so much of uh, authority that we can walk in because we are subjected to a higher authority see see our authority our uh, our use of authority comes from us being subjected to the greater authority who is god himself right which means his word his ways his works right um how do we know that when we look at um, when you look at the book of james right um james chapter 4 uh, verse 7 right james chapter 4 and 7 therefore submit to god and resist the devil and he will flee from you so so there's a there's a particular order in which he says that they will will flee the order is i need to submit to god and when i resist out of that place of submission then there is authority right i walk in authority i walk in kingdom authority and the devil flees okay so uh, so when we walk so he spoke with authority they were astonished at his teaching he spoke with authority because he was in subjection to the father right and so so also for us when we walk in subjection and also when we look at john chapter 15 right um excuse me sorry um john chapter 15 the lord talks about us abiding in the vine right john chapter 15 and he says um verse 4 abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches and he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing so he's talking about you know that authority that flows from him from the vine to the branch right we are the branch we are connected to the vine what flows the god kind of power that flows in him flows in us right? and it comes out of that abiding out of that intimacy out of that closeness right there's no other way for that authority and for that power to flow right okay then um the fifth thing that we see <clears throat> which we, uh, we we look at today is that he ministered with a meek heart right meaning he ministered with humility right the lord he says in matthew 11 28 and 29 he says come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls so he's is describing himself i'm gentle and lowly in heart okay now what prevents us from ministering with a humble heart any thoughts what prevents us from walking in humility or with what stops us from even ministering with humility just getting carried away with our flesh um uh, just with getting carried away by the flesh more than leaning Sorry, on by, by what uh, just getting carried away by the flesh more than leaning on to the spirit holy spirit guidance while preaching being carried away by the flesh um can you be a little more specific like uh, so example that, while yeah. preaching it might get two personal examples or some uh, uh, incidents like you know like either vengeance or something mm. when you're on the pulpit if it is just getting driven by that to just point to say something to somebody through that thing which is not called for mm. that takes us away from that humility and uh, thing to mm. preach right. keeping it personal rather than you know, scriptural right so one is okay Let, let's say Pastor, i ego and pride also so we go in pride we minister in pride is that what you're saying ego ego and pride ego yeah. and pride okay yeah. ego and pride mm. yeah being superior having the i yeah i see the chat yeah pastor so maybe, yeah pastor maybe we are uh, we are not submitted to christ fully that's why this uh, we are stopped from mm. 
yeah. when we are not submitted fully yeah now practically you know when we uh, when we look at okay jesus is ministered now he's a son of god you know he's walking with this with this anointing from the holy spirit and you know um destroying the works of satan in terms of you know healing and deliverance and all that and he says he did it with a meek heart right with humility so many times we we have a tendency to put on in order to prove something to people right um we need to say something or do something in order to maybe win their approval or prove something to show that hey i have these expertise and therefore you better listen to me you know in a in a preaching kind of a teaching situation environment right so we sometimes we do that in order to prove something to people and then we are no longer walking in humility and like you said you know uh, we get sometimes drawn away by the things of the flesh uh, rather than being led by the spirit of god like right? so practically speaking it's like in some situations it is like you know i we look at the audience and then we say okay these people don't know anything right or these people don't know enough these people don't know as much as i know right so here i come as a as an expert on the topic expert in the revelation uh, and then you know as an expert i'm you know giving advice and wisdom and teaching and and saying you better listen because i'm the expert and you are you are you are not right so i'm elevating myself above the audience and i'm saying okay you you do not know and you know i'm comparing and i'm putting the others down and and that comes through in the in the attitude that the whole attitude comes through uh, even as you minister right? even as we speak so that is something to be avoided because the lord ministered the lord himself ministered with a me caught you know sometimes we have this fear it's an insecure feeling that hey, when i walk in humility and when i you know make decisions out of humility you know i will be exploited right? these people will walk all over me they will you know they will uh, manipulate they will be exploited i will be exploited you know so that is not you know what uh, what the lord says that you can be like a doormat you can other people can just you know uh, you have to say yes to everything that the other person has is saying or you know doing no you walk in kingdom authority but we walk in humility as well we walk honoring the person right in all our interactions every we honor the other person we esteem the other person better than ourselves right we do that and even when uh, when it comes to ministering the word so this is a very um you know direct example that he ministered in humility so we do the same thing right we don't consider ourselves we consider ourselves privilege that god would put us in such a environment right we consider ourselves uh, you know we consider is we consider it a privilege that god would place us in such a sitting setting and that god would trust us with his word right with the work of his spirit that he would give us the opportunity that he would trust us with this and that we would deliver it right so many times we we need to just look at ourselves like like a you know like a swiggy or zomato person like delivering okay, they give it you know they have not prepared it in the sense they have not they have not you know uh, prepared the food but they are just delivering it has been prepared already but they have been given they are supposed to deliver it right so when we have that heart and make sure that we deliver it in the right way we do it with humility we do it take it as a privilege then we will minister with a meek heart and the lord himself um did that right he explained and he described himself saying i am gentle and i'm lowly in heart and he says um you know the wise in heart proverb 16:21 says the wise in heart will be called prudent and sweetness of the lips increases learning right okay then another aspect of the lord ministering is that he he used the old testament scriptures right he used um, he used the the scriptures which were 
um, uh, we quoted extensively from the scriptures of that day, right? Which which was from the Old Testament. We uh, we see several examples that he used and several references that uh, the Lord used. Um, uh, you know, he, uh, if you, you see in in the Gospels, you see that there was a reference to the the brazen serpent, right? Um, right from you know uh, from matthew's gospel you see several references over and over again uh, i'm just i'm just randomly turning you know to uh, i'm at matthew's matthew gospel chapter 15 right again he's he's quoting 15 and verse 8 talk about uh, again he's quoting from the old testament he's saying these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me and they're teaching as commandments the doctrines of men Right. So again, he's quoting from uh, Old Testament scripture. He used many references, uh, many examples like Moses, uh, the brazen serpent. Um, you know, he says, just like how Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so also the Son of Man should be will be lifted up. And he's referring to the kind of sal uh, kind of redemption that will happen, the, uh, the forgiveness of sin that would happen. Right. Um, so he he did all this. So we. We see these examples. So even we, in our dividing the word, rightly dividing the word, right? we look at the entire scripture. Right? Right? But we need to, like we said, you know, when we looked at character study, study of Bible, you know, biblical characters, we need to see it in the right perspective that we are people living in, the, in this dispensation, the new covenant, right? And uh, we... There's nothing wrong, and we need to use the Old Testament scriptures, but we need to put it in the right perspective. Know that you are a new covenant person, and know that you are addressing a new covenant body of believers, a people in the new covenant. Right? We need to have that understanding. Okay? He used parables, illustrations. Right? Any parable that you can that comes to your mind? No. Huh? Yeah. Where do we find that? Luke chapter fifteen, right? Uh, any idea why he shared that parable? Asapu. Why did he share that parable? Luke fifteen. No. Christ only is uh, sharing that parable. He's teaching. So why did he share that parable? You can look into the word. It's in Luke 15. Any idea? See, uh, lost son, lost sheep, lost coin, lost, sorry, lost coin, lost sheep. Mm. Okay, that we are lost without him. Yeah, that comes through in the parable, but then there's a, you know, there's a reason why he's sharing all those parables. Okay, shows God's love. Hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, if you just look at that, that chapter, right? Luke chapter fifteen. If you if you see, okay, verse one, then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to him to hear him. Okay, tax collectors, sinners. And the Pharisees and the scribes they complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. So so what was it? You know, they're saying this person, you know, Jesus is spending time with sinners and tax collectors. And so he shared this parable with them. So that was the situation. They're saying, you know, why are you spending time with sinners? Why are you doing this with people who are tax collectors who and who are probably, you know, shunned by society? And then he says, uh, so he spoke this parable to them, saying, and then one by one. Okay, so in sharing this parable, what was he actually communicating? He was communicating to them. He was teaching them, hey, this is the Father's heart. These people are lost. Coin is lost. The sheep are lost. But the father is going after the lost. Yeah. You know, 
there's there's somebody who's searching something is lost somebody who's searching they find it there's a rejoicing all three stories right almost have the same kind of a thing and then he's saying you know this is this is the father's heart the father's going in search i'm spending time with the sinners and the tax collectors why because these are the kind of people that the father is actually his heart is for them he's going in search of them so that he might find them so that and you know is is talking about there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no you know similarly you know he keeps repeating it and uh, and in the prodigal son he very clearly illustrates the uh, the father's heart the father goes runs to the son the son has not apologized right the son has not said anything the son said to himself i'm going to the father and he turned and he's walking towards the father that's it and the father runs after him so he's saying it you guys are saying that you know spending time with these people but actually that is the father's heart father's heart for these people is this that he wants the lost to be found the lost to be brought back to the house so that they can be rejoicing right so he used parables and why did he use parables yeah so it was uh, when we look at parables these are everyday stories right somebody sweeping somebody losing losing a coin sweeping the house finding it everyday story but that story has a spiritual truth right it has a spiritual significance spiritual truth so it was easy for people to connect easy for people to an illustration does that right any illustration does that it just gives an understanding of the truth and it's easy for for people to receive the truth and understand and recall the truth every time i'm sure they they heard about you know someone searching for something i'm sure that they will connect make that connection oh jesus talked about this right okay um the next one that we see is that um he, it was it was not just mere words that he spoke it was just mere it was not mere information that he gave right he was talking about the kingdom of god a kingdom of god is like this and he spoke to them about that he uh, you know he revealed the father's heart um in all this it was not just mere information or mere words we see in luke chapter 5 and verse 7 <coughs> Okay, Luke chapter five verse seven. It says that um, when we uh, Luke chapter five talks about the uh, the miraculous um, catch of fish, right? So in his instruction, in his words, when when Peter obeyed, they saw the the supernatural provision, right? So we can, we see that in his ministering, in his healing, in his you know meeting with people. the power of god was present the power of god was put on display right uh, for all to see so so we know that okay it is not just mere information i'm here to you know we're not here to you know in our ministering in our preaching teaching we're not here to just educate people though that happens we're not here to just people go back better informed right yes that happens but in that information there is also the revelation of truth right and with that revelation of truth there is the power of god that is displayed right the power of god is put on display raw power of god put on display when there's a healing when there's a deliverance when there is you know when there's manifestation of his glory and in these awesome ways but the power of god is also put on display in very quiet ways right we should understand that it's it's also very apparent but also in very quiet ways when there's a heart transformation zacchaeus right zacchaeus now it's it, the story is astounding right we all know about that a man of short, short stature he crack, um what tree does he climb up sycamore tree you know sunday school some of these songs we've sung climbs up a sycamore tree he Jesus sees him and says I must come to your house today. And in his interaction with Jesus, right? There's something that has happened, a transformation in his life. He says I will give 
manifold times, like twice of what I've taken from these people. I've wrongly taxed people, I've wrongly taken, but I'll, I'll repay that, right? Why did he come to that conclusion? Just wonder, right? What did Jesus, you know, he, he's listening, of course. He's listening to the teaching and something about the power of the Lord's teaching, not just mere words, right? Something about that which touched his heart so deeply that he said, I'm going to give back. You know? So that's the power of God's word. That's the power of uh, his, uh, his word that brings transformation in people's lives, right? Um, complete change. The lady at the well, the woman at the well, you know, uh, having a, you know, she's living with a man who's not a husband. Complete change. He goes, and there's, there's almost like joy in her heart where she goes and testifies about her life. It's She comes at a time to the well so that she can avoid people, right? She can avoid people so that she can be alone um, and she can draw water at the well. She doesn't want to meet anyone. People look down on her because of her you know, lifestyle. Socially not accepted, right? But after hearing the word of the lord after hearing the you know word of knowledge that she received so, something changed when she went she was not ashamed to tell you know she told people you know come meet a man who told me all that i ever did in my life and it was not proud things you know it's not accomplishments it's not like you know i i accomplished this i got this award that now you know it's not about that it's about her life the things she was not really ashamed, uh, is not really proud of, right? So she goes and testifies to the whole village, come see a man who did, you know, who knows, talked about everything that I ever did, right? Such a change. So the power of God. So that's something for us to again take in. Hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm being faithful to God. I'm you know, making sure that I share what he wants me to share. But in doing that, I do it with the expectation. I do it in faith that his power will confirm the sharing of the word and his power will make a change in people's lives. Right? So we are dependent on the power of God right? to be present and to make a difference. Right? Um, he ministered out of compassion. The last thing that we see is that he ministered out of compassion. Um, it was... You know, we can minister for various reasons, <clears throat> right? We can minister with different heart attitudes, right? Paul, when he was in prison, he says that there were people who were actually preaching the gospel for various reasons. It was not sincere, right? They supposing to add affliction to his chains, he says. You know, people are not sincere. They are um, sharing the gospel with ulterior motives, meaning the motives are not pure. They are ministering with different reasons. They're ministering for the sake of fame. They're ministering for the sake of their popularity. They're ministering for whatever reasons, right? But when it came to the Lord, he ministered out of compassion. He saw the people. He saw the need. His heart was moved with compassion, right? So it was not like a professional talk. Okay, you take it. You deal with it. No, he was engaged with people's heart. He saw, he empathized, and he was moved with compassion. He ministered out of compassion, right? So um, when we see Jonah's life, we see that Jonah, Jonah also ministered, but it was not with compassion. And the Lord actually kind of corrected him, right? Rebuked him and said, Jonah, what, what are you doing? You know, you there are these people who don't know the le le left hand from the right. There are children. There are all these things are there. All these, uh, the animals and everything is there. And then, you know, you're upset that I changed. You know, I did not visit them with the judgment. You're upset, right? Um, so, <coughs> um, in Jonah's case, we see that he did it very hesitatingly. It was not with. He was not engaged with in that ministry. Right, so sometimes that can happen to us because of tiredness, because of weariness, uh, because of you know maybe we are offended in our hearts, uh, maybe the ha our heart is not tender towards God, various reasons, right? Because of which we do it out of a sense of 
I don't know. I have to do it. I've I've come here and and not with compassion, right? And but that's not God's heart, right? So He ministered out of compassion. So we see all this happening uh, in the Lord's life. Okay. So let's move on to the next chapter. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> Yeah, just one second. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just ask the question. So, yes. so since you've done with this chapter seven, yeah. uh, question very simple, but um, is it possible for each one of us also to, you know, uh, preach and teach like Jesus did? Is and, it possible uh, to preach uh, and teach like Jesus did? Uh, and and if so, how best that uh, you know we can come close to? The way he ministered to, to and what extent? preached and taught. Okay, uh, just one second. I'm just okay. Um, so the question is. Um, it, is it really possible to walk like he did, uh, to minister, preach, preach and teach specifically, like like the Lord did? Okay, so the, the answer is that is the Lord's desire, right? That is His desire, actually, right? Like Paul Paul himself says that uh, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? So the Lord's desire is that that we not only preach and teach but we minister the way He did. Right. For example, if you look at uh, um, John chapter 14, right? Um, so that's um, John chapter 14, verse 12. Yeah. So he says, um, like, even in the Great Commission, even before we get into John chapter 14, even in the Great Commission, his desire is that you, he who believes in me, will go teach the things that I did, that I taught, lay hands on the sick, that they will recover. Uh, cast out demons, so which is all that he did. So he wants, yeah, all the works. So he wants the believer uh, who believes in him to do that. Right. So here, John chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Again, you know, as he was addressing the disciple, he said, "Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father." And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then uh, he, he goes on to say, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, verse 16, and I will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. So it's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit, the abiding uh, presence of the Holy Spirit, um, which is the key to him going to the Father so that he might send the Holy Spirit. And with this whole thing that yes i walked on the earth as a man empowered anointed by the holy spirit to do the works that i did and now he's saying that you, know, you will do also right so so god's desire is that we minister we preach yeah so yeah in terms of everything that he did including preaching and teaching yeah <clears throat> because he ministered under the anointing of the holy spirit so in in dismantling the power of the enemy um, it was the preaching, teaching is part of that. Like he taught and then he healed, you know, he, so that's the thing that we, yeah. Right. Um, okay. Okay. So Abhishek has the question, why did the Lord speak three parables with the same topic? Yeah. So probably they just needed to understand, you know, it was reiterate the same truth, uh, but from different uh, from different angles. Like, especially if you look at the coin and the sheep, simple. Somebody is lost, or something is lost. It's found. Uh, somebody is going in search. They found rejoicing, right? So that truth comes out. And in the prodigal son, little more aspects or facets of that truth. Of again, here the father is, you know, seeking, and he goes on to talk about the son who has lost everything, who has lived out and, uh, you know, uh, a wasteful lifestyle and so on. So it talks about the extent to which a person can get lost, right? Uh, extent to which a person can go away, and the extent to which the father is seeking and his love and forgiveness. So 
yeah it's um, just to reiterate uh, this powerful truth of the father's heart right okay okay chapter 8 let's look at uh, a few um, few things here so as a minister new testament minister okay in the new dispensation what is the personal what do how do i personally prepare right? um prepare myself and okay when we consider jesus he is the eternal word who became flesh he we see that he was a uh, he, he walked as man but anointed by the holy spirit and he being the eternal word whatever he said and did was the word of god so there's a difference right um whatever he said whatever he did was the word of god right so now to us as human beings uh, who are called by him as his disciples we have this privilege of his eternal word being carried in our lives like communicating giving the privilege he's given us the privilege to communicate his his word so <clears throat> you might have studied this in systematic theology like we see that when we look at the whole thing of word of god word of god is what comes from him god spoke things were created how the word of god he spoke it right then we also see that god writes and he gives and that is also the word of god written on the stone right god asked joshua to write add on He, he, you know, he, he tell, he tells Joshua, you know, you add these things. Uh, if you look at it, you know, to the law, these are some things to add on. So that is also the word of God. Then we see in Jeremiah's case, you know, God says, because behold, I put my words in your mouth, so that you may speak out and you may establish, you may pull down. So His word in our mouth is still. our mouth meaning when we speak it is still the word of god so for us to understand that um that as a vessel as an instrument right when i speak forth his word it has the ability to be impaired by emotions biases prejudices whatever i can add to it right i can i can color it right it has yeah that it there is the possibility of that happening right but does that does not change the fact that it is the word of god now for me to communicate it if i communicate it free of any prejudice free of any bias then i am a good minister right of god but if it comes uh, you know uh, contaminated or tainted with uh you know with with my own bias and prejudice and so on then it, it you know it it goes ad, you know as an adulterated word of god right so there's nothing wrong in god's side from god's side but i need to be careful i need to ensure that there's nothing wrong from my side right when i when i minister the word of god when i share for the word of god right so which means that as new testament ministers the first thing is that our flesh needs to be worked on okay so which means our thoughts our emotions our unrenewed thinking everything has to come and be touched by the word of god the very truth that god wants me to share wants us to share you know maybe we are preparing something and god puts something in our hearts and we need to allow the god to allow god and allow his word to really touch our thoughts our emotions and our biases sometimes right our sin and we need that to be dealt with even before we minister right which means that um yeah it has to bring death to some parts of our some aspects of our life the meaning that certain things have to stop some certain things have to change right and before it becomes you know we before we communicate before we uh, share the word of god second thing that we see is that god will use our thoughts god will use our emotions god will use our the way he has created us maybe he has created us to communicate certain things in a very creative way 
maybe he has created us to you know communicate certain things in a um, you know gifted us given the ability to maybe share things in a uh, so some of these complex thoughts complex truth in a very simple manner that people can understand um, he has maybe created us to share things in a very humorous manner that you know people are able to receive it in a very clear concise way that people are able to remember it right so god will use our abilities right it doesn't mean that okay god will not use our abilities the way is great god, god will use our abilities right but all these abilities all these talents and everything has to be worked on shaped refined by god so that's the thing you know we bring our abilities we bring ourselves to him in surrender and we say okay god you know you know all this let your word you work on it you know the your spirit god you work on it god and you change you refine so that i can be a vessel of honor i can be a vessel that communicates the shares this in the best way possible and let nothing of my own uh you know my own hurts or biases let it not come as a hindrance you know you know this thing is a very um it can happen in a very um subtle way right in a way that we don't even realize you know maybe some hurt uh, i remember you know there was this person this lady who used to minister share the gospel and uh, teach and all that uh, and she did not have a very happy marriage right so she did not have a happy marriage so all her jokes when it came to marriage husband and wife and all that will always be putting down the husband right always be you know making fun of the man and you know so you know in the marriage situation and nothing complimentary about marriage itself right it will always be marriage is something to be suffered marriage is something to be endured kind of a you know always right so why was it coming through otherwise you know wonderful walk with god right wonderful relationship with god close walk with god all that is fine but this because it was not dealt with by the word of god this was coming through right so sometimes without our own knowledge you know certain things come through in that message so well a discerning person a mature person would say oh maybe this person is hurt in this area right so they will they will receive it um they would not hold on to it okay i need to test this i i should not that's like what we see in you know thessalonians right hold on to what is good that is uh, that is for this prophecy prophetic word but same thing here also like we can hold on to what is good and just let go of those things that are biased or tainted right so if there is a person who is not discerning who is not you know, who might be you know maybe growing right that person could very well receive that and that whole attitude and thought and you know that person would receive that and think okay this is how it must be right and 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 sadly uh, you know when we look at the kingdom of god when we look at church and we see that some very sad role models right wrong priorities and in the preaching and teaching it comes through in the illustrations it comes through you know what what are sadly wrong priorities right and um, like i remember listening to a you know a person he's talking about how they used to be and how god has changed their life how god has lifted them up so nothing wrong like right? saying okay we used to be in this place we didn't have anything but god has lifted them gifted us up right so now i am a minister of god and so in all his teaching about what god has done his emphasis is material things right his emphasis on i could not eat you know i did not have certain meals to eat in a day but now i am I'm, i'm only having biryani something like that he actually said that you know and yeah lunch dinner i have biryani no problem i use I, i i didn't have ticket to travel but now i i travel business class in a flight right so well it's true that god has changed god has changed his position god has you know lifted him up from where he was to where he is but the priority comes through in the illustration when he's testifying over and over again so what is happening a person who's listening saying okay 
you know if i need for me success in ministry is that if i travel like that if my lifestyle is like that if i wear clothes like that that is success in ministry why did that person come to that conclusion because he was not discerning in what the other person was sharing all the other things fine but you know this is coming through in his communication right so so the importance of you know god will use our thoughts feelings characteristics experiences testimonies everything but it needs to be refined by god it needs to be tempered by the word of god okay third thing we see is that god's word is delivered through human vessels having human elements having human marks possessing characteristics so with all this it remains god's word and right? inspired by god that right? prompted by the holy spirit so um the so the importance of us having gone through a process of transformation uh having the, the having the word you know the, the thing is having the word become flesh you know the principle word should become flesh in us this truth of god's word should be seen in us should be part of our spirit our life our thought uh, you know our thoughts being renewed to his word and then when we say okay then when can we we can say that the word became flesh in me right and then we it can actually touch others uh, it can flow out to others lives right <coughs> okay um okay th this is uh, abhishek's question based on the parables is the elder son referring to scribes and pharisees because they're not able to understand god's love yes exactly so he's referring to the elder son as the this immediate audience that he was he was talking to uh, saying that hey, you're not able to understand god's heart for people because um, the others were like the prodigal son the tax collectors and sinners they were like the prodigal son you know and um, and the and the and the older son who was elder son who was actually in the father's house did not really understand the father's heart yeah okay fine so um so the the word has to become flesh in us and then we uh, we share the word okay so when it, when it comes to ministering the word of god another thing that we need to understand is that every time it need not be a a new revelation that the world has never heard okay sometimes we we place such an expectation right now the expectation is what oh i need to bring something completely new that people have not heard while well, that's a well if that is if that is what god will reveal that is what god will show fine no problem but also we need to understand when we say a new revelation it's also something that god adds on to what is already shared and he adds on uh, to what is maybe about faith maybe about you know a, a different a, a perspective on the gifts of the spirit maybe a different perspective on end whatever you know uh, the christian life and character and so many things right so it can be something that a revelation something that god is adding on already so don't be you know maybe you know you're just praying fasting praying asking god god what should i say and god gives a topic like share on the love of god like so you don't have to be disappointed and say god you know what is this everybody knows something simple no god will give an add to the revelation of his love which is can be powerful life changing transformative right okay fine we'll stop here and then we'll continue next class thank you